Hey everyone, let's take a look at number three. Layla's parents are concerned that she seems short for her age. Their doctor has the following record of Layla's height. All right, so I see I have two variables here. I've got age and I've got height. Those are both numerical variables and I would argue they're two continuous numerical variables. But if I have two numerical variables, that's automatically gonna be a regression problem. So I've got a regression analysis problem here. All right, anytime you've got two numerical variables in here, we're, we're gonna be doing linear regression. You can start to see it, what's the equation of the LSRL. So I'm gonna put this variable in L1, this in L2, and I'm gonna run stat, calc, and then we're gonna to go to eight, which is gonna say linear regression, A plus BX, and I'm gonna feed it three pieces of information, L1, L2, and Y1. And then I'm just gonna see what, what my calculator pops back and we'll figure out which of these options um, are the correct answer. And just looking at it, I can see I should be getting a 71.95 and a 0.383 because those numbers are the same in all four options here. It's just gonna be a matter of which order they go in and which word we use. So let, let's go make sure I'm getting those numbers. All right, here we go. So I put my data into my lists you can see it there, and I'm using the app instead of the physical calculator. I always prefer the physical calculator, but when I'm doing these screencasts, I need to use the app. So I'll go L1, L2, and then we'll go into Y1. Oops, I'm just going to overwrite Y1 right now. And then there we go, 71.95 and 0.383. So let's start to piece this together. All right, so if I look at my calculator, my calculator said... All right, A plus BX, which is what we want. And they said A should be 71.95 and B should be 0.383. So if I substitute this in, all right, this would be Y would equal 71.95 plus 0.383X. And it's at this point, I can rule out these two options. And then it's going to become a matter of, well, which one is the independent variable and which one's dependent or explanatory in response. And you can see that our first variable age, that's our X, because we're trying to figure out if I knew Layla's age, could I predict her height? So my height is going to be predicted by the equation 71.95 plus 0.383 times the age. So in that case, that's going to be option A. All right. And then the next thing says, hey, what's her predicted height at 58 months? Well, let's just plug 58 months in there. So if I want her height, when her age is 58, that is going to be 71.95 plus 0.383 times, let's see, 58. And when I crunch that number on my calculator, I'm gonna get 94.164. And that's one of the options here. You can see there's two, and we, well, two numerical options. And then we need to figure out the units. Now, are, is height in months or is it in centimeters? Well, if we look back up, height's in centimeters, and that makes sense, you're gonna be this tall, so there's our answer. All right, now for our slope, that's the next one, interpret the slope. So let me just scroll down a bit. So my slope for this problem, if we look at the actual equation, it was 0.383, and I'll highlight it just so you can see it. There's our slope. So this is 0.383, and I always like to write this as a unit ratio. A unit ratio be, meaning that the denominator is one, and then I like to look at the units. So if I think about this as y over x, and I think about the y units, let me, let me scrunch this, the y units versus the x units. Again, this was x, this was y. So really, I'm gonna erase this. This is gonna be centimeters per month, right? Centimeters per month. So if I said this out loud, it would be, cent oops, that's not how you say centimeters. Centimeters per month. So if we just take a step back, it's saying that for every month older Layla gets, she her height increases by about 0.383 centimeters. All right, so she's growing about 0.4 centimeters per month, and let's go find that interpretation. So if I look at this, first of all, I'm going to rule out this option and this option because they have 71.95 in there. At least these ones are talking about 0.383. And just off of that, I can find the answer. Look at 0.383 months or 0.383 centimeters. Well, we know it's 0.383 centimeters. 
And you can see it for every one month increase in Layla's age, here's her predicted average increase in her height is 0.383 centimeters. And it's an increase because the slope is positive. It's an average because it is a slope. Slopes are average rates of change. And it's predicted because that's the whole point of regression. We're just trying to predict things. So we're not saying that Layla grows exactly 0.383 centimeters per month. But if you average it out over the first few months of her life, it's about 0.383 centimeters per month. All right. The last thing we have to do is figure out if a line is appropriate. Now, there are three factors that go into this. You need to look at your original scatter plot. All right. You need to look at your correlation coefficient. And then the most important thing is you need to look at your residual plot. So we're going to do all of that, and I'm going to do it on my calculator, and we're going to take a look at it. But let me actually just go through and get the R value, because when we ran regression, we should be able to see that. All right, so R is 0.994, and that's different from R squared. So R is your correlation coefficient, and R squared is the coefficient of determination. They both pretty much give you the same information, just two different ways of doing it. But let me look at my R value, 0.994, and let's see if we can narrow down our options. So R, let me get this gone, this was 0.994. Okay, so let's start to see what we got here. All right, so I see an R of 0.989, that's not it. This is correct, oh, here's another one of 0.989, that's not it, and this one's correct. So we need to figure out what's going on with the scatter plot, and if the residual plot shows a pattern, right? Because if I start to compare the two remaining answers, they're both consistent in factor number one. They both say the scatter plot is working, right? They both have the same R value, the correct R value at that, right? But then it really comes down to, did the residual plot show a pattern or not? And once we make the call on that, we can circle the correct um, answer. So let's go ahead. And now when I go to make these graphs on my app, it is very different from the, um, the physical calculator. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this graph and you'll have to just bear with me. I need to do scatter plot and then let's go, oops, scatter plots up here, excuse me. Let's go L1 against L2 and then I'm going to go ahead and hit graph and again, give me a moment. This is always a little weird. There it is, zoom nine. So I can see there are my, my regression, well here's my LSRL, right? And then you can also see the actual data points. If it helps, I can scrunch this in a little bit. That's the one cool thing about the app. Because it's a touch screen, I can pinch it. So that's all fine and good, but let's go let's go make the the residual plot. Because as I look at this, yeah, the scatter plot does look like a good fit. That looks like a linear model. That looks great. But let's see what the residual plot's doing. So let me go back into here and change this to resid. There it is. All right, and now let me hit graph, and now I have to hit zoom stat again. And it's a little bit hard to see, but let me pinch that in. So I can see the five points. There's one, oh, excuse me, six points. There's one, there's one, there, there, there. I, I don't see any pattern. All right, that, that looks like a, a mess to me. So I'm gonna say there is no pattern, which is great, that's fine. So if there's no pattern, right, we're down here, I get a happy face and the linear model is a good fit. So this is the correct answer that I'm looking for. And that's how we solve number three. All right, thanks so much, bye.